So we're going to get started with class number 21. And I'm just going to start with the standard box, which is what I always do. And I did forget to replace my pen, so I do remember that it was not working right, but I forgot to get a new one, so we'll have to deal with this one for today still. So in this box, you're going to draw uh, parallel lines that are probably, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch apart. They don't have to be that big, and they certainly don't have to be diagonal. You can do them straight across, up and down, whatever it is that you want. Alright, so now inside one section, just pick one. You're gonna draw some triangles. And you're basically it's like a zigzag. So you if you want if you work from the top down, you're gonna have a little bit better looking triangle or peak. So you want them to be sort of wide at the bottom, and then the points to be wide apart at the top. You don't want to make them too skinny or too narrow because um, well it just makes the pattern look a little crazy. So now on this next row. I'm going to draw a line straight there, find my center point, and then end my point right underneath that valley. So it should line up exactly. So each row should line up. I mean, like not exactly. Of course, you don't have to measure it. This is untangled, of course, not, you know, engineering class 101. So we are going to just kind of match that same zigzag in the other ones. Now you can go ahead and you can fill in this entire, you know, fill in each row or column or whatever you have. Um, just so you get your, your triangles the same, and then we'll go back and finish the pattern, so. Alright, so that's kind of what we have minus my little boo-boo here. Oops. Anyway, um, we're going to now, I'm just going to pick a row, of course. I'm going to draw these little arched lines. I'm going to start with the peaks, or excuse me, the valleys, the bottom points um, of this row. You can do it however you want. You can just fill in one section. And I'm going to try and get maybe five or six arched lines um, in this one triangle. It looks like I have five. So my kids keep talking to me while I'm drawing here, so I'm trying to cover three count. Okay, there we go. So you want to have the same number of arched rows in each of these um, upside down triangles here, because when you flip it to do the design the other way, you're going to have to have them kind of line up. So I'm just going to go through this whole row and do the same number in each one. I always tend to start in the middle and then work my way to the right and then come back into the left. The reason that I do that is because then I can kind of get a feel for how the pattern's going to look um, through several main sections versus having these little ones on the side where they're kind of cut off. So I always work in the middle and then go from there. So each of these points on the bottom of each of these triangles is going to be colored in black. Um, I just do the little point. They shouldn't be too too large, just this little, this little teeny tiny bottom piece. So now I'm going to actually do the the up or the mountain, the you know the peak, the point here, uh, and I'm going to draw the arch the opposite direction. If I get my pen to work here, and this is where you're going to line them up. You're going to line up from this line to this line, this line to this line. But these are all arched, of course. So you're going to have the same number of lines there. 
and it's actually going to be easier for me if I just flip my paper here so feel free to do that and here I'm going to work from the top down the reason I'm going to work from the top of this triangle down to the point when I did not do that the other way is because it's easier for me to see the lines um, that are coming I guess over the top versus kind of looking under my hand to see where they're supposed to line up so it's a matter of preference really is what I'm saying If some of your lines don't quite line up perfectly, don't don't sweat it. Just keep going. Or if one of yours accidentally has uh, a little bit, you know, has an, uh, an extra line in it, don't worry. Nobody will know but you. So again, we're going to kind of, uh, color in these just these little points at the bottom. Well, I guess it would be the top, but so if you flipped your paper, it'd be at the bottom. Just like that. Now I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to do the next row. Again, you can just keep your paper in the same direction and do all the triangles in that one that one direction and then flip them and do all of them the other way, um, which is probably what I'll end up doing, but um, just know that you can you can certainly work however it's comfortable for you to work.
All right, so I think this looks really, really cool. It is very busy, um, but I'm just going to actually put a little bit darker. Oops, I missed one. I just saw it. Forgot one little section. Perfect. So now I'm going to use the, the larger marker that I have and just do my, my uh, original lines that I drew. You do not need to do this. You can leave the pattern exactly how you have it. Um, but I like that little bit extra separation. It makes my eyes not go quite as squirrely. So again, that's up to you. That's personal preference. You can alter that design however you want as well. All right, so we're going to start our second design. I'm just going to draw another box. You can put it anywhere on your paper. And if you don't want to have a box, you don't have to. This one's relatively easy. Um, you can alter this design again however you wish. I'm just going to pick a corner. You're going to draw an arch and then you're going to draw a double line and then you're going to draw some little teeny tiny circles on the top i know it's kind of hard to see on the video especially with my hand in the way here um but then you're going to color in that center circle nice and black so you'll see it in just one second as soon as i get this colored in i'm actually going to use the bigger marker because this is not working out so i'm going to draw my second row and i'm going to have it where my my arches die in the middle of the row before so you see it's kind of in the middle of this arch at the bot the first arch i drew and now i'm going to draw my second one right off of that so they should alternate those peaks and valleys should alternate kind of like um, mermaid scales so to speak and then i'm going to use i'm going to use a marker you can use whatever you want and if you don't want to color these in you can alter the design you know to make it something that you do like so this one's very, very simple. It's pretty mindless. It looks really cool when it's all done, so it's one of those that you can make as large or as small as you'd like. And now I'm going to go for this next one. You'll get the idea, but uh, I'm going to go from the center of that one to the center of the other uh, arch that I did first. So it should be, it should look like mermaid scales or some kind of like a, uh, a scale type pattern. And these are just little teeny tiny uh, concentric circles. They're not, they're not, um, you know, colored in, they're hollow or they're white. But again, you can change it to whatever you want.
Alright, so the last one that we're gonna do is a border. And this one's kind of fun. It just looks like these weird little pods. So I'm gonna draw an oval. Not overly large, but a good size. And it's just a wonky oval. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. And I'm gonna draw another oval inside of it that's either in a different direction or different, quite different shape. And then one little teeny tiny circle in the middle. And I'm gonna draw these arched lines that go across. And they're pretty close together. Not, not super close that they're like black looking. Um, but you want them to be pretty close together. I remember while we always draw arch lines, we kind of start and then it, you have to kind of draw the line along the outside. You want to do that as well so it kind of looks like it's dying into the, the outside line. And do the same thing on the outside uh, oval, but these are going to be much further apart. So the center one um, has close lines, this outside one has wider or further apart lines, I should say not wider, but further apart. And they should die into the outside. You shouldn't just kind of end it on the outside. They should die into it. So I'm going to uh, shade it as I go. I think for this pattern you actually do need shading. I've drawn it without and I've drawn it with shading and it looks just so much better with the shading. So I'm just putting a light line around the outside edge of that one and then I'm going to do the outside edge of this outer ring as well. And it's not very dark. I would start light and then you can um, you know, smudge it a little bit with your finger and then you can add more where you want to add more you can you can alter it however you want consider where maybe your light source is if you're going to do that kind of a shading if you understand that sort of thing um, you can you can have it be brighter on one side and, and darker shading on another it's up to you so here i'm just smudging the pencil around the outside just to kind of give it a little bit softer look and now i'm going to draw the do the exact same thing the exact same process with more ovals that kind of hit it. So here it should actually touch the oval bead, the oval, the uh, first oval I drew, excuse me. So some of your ovals might be a little bit more like circles, and that's okay. And you can change the direction of these lines, and mine kind of just seem to be going all the same direction. Um, but you can certainly t turn the arches the other way so that they go the other direction. There's no rhyme or reason to that. You just want to make sure that your inner sink, your, excuse me, your middle ring and your outer ring have the same direction lines or arches in them. Don't forget that C-shaped arch. So again, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to shade. And the shading is actually on the inside ring, but it's on the outside edge, if that makes, um, makes sense. So the shading is not on the outer ring, it's on the, the, uh, the middle ring, I guess. And now this one is on the inside edge. I know, it's confusing. Just do your best. Whatever looks good, looks good.
pattern is actually really versatile. Um, you can actually do this as an inside piece as well inside of a section. You just have to do them maybe individually um, or you can do this as kind of a row and then do something funky behind it uh, or some kind of accent. You can do this as a medallion, whatever it is that you want. You can have these um, you know, go straight across your section or be an edge piece uh, or whatever it is that you'd like. Let's get that middle out of there. Um, or you can have them go um, or, you know, in a circle around some other section that you've done. I hope that you've enjoyed the patterns that we learned today. Remember that Zentangle is happening live in the library every Thursday. So you just have to call the front desk and you can sign up for that. I hope you have a fantastic day.